I love loop-based music, but I've been speaking to some of our subscribers and other young musicians who work a lot with loops, and they've expressed a sort of frustration with their tracks getting sort of treading water and not having a sense of direction. That's what this video is about. Okay, so we'll be listening to lots of different tracks, talking to different musicians, some brilliant composers of various genres, um, and just exploring this, how you can put peaks and troughs into your track and give them a sense of direction. Do you need structures? Well, all music, doesn't it, have a, a, some sort of sense of uh, structure. It's got a beginning and an end, so it's, it's got a structure. You can definitely work with intuition, but you usually find that um, people that aren't thinking a lot about structure are actually just doing other conventional structures. They're doing the received sort of wisdom of the genre that they're working in. If they're writing sort of singer-songwriter songs, they're going verse, chorus, verse, chorus. Nothing wrong with that at all. Having a structure there of some sort and knowing, right, at least being able to like define your task to some degree, even though it's still incredibly broad, saying <clears throat> it's got to last about three minutes uh, and it's got to fit one of these structures um, is just really useful. I played in bands as a keyboard player and that really, I got used to seeing how different singers, songwriters worked. And I feel the song form is at the heart of what we do. So verse, verse, bridge, chorus, middle eight, uh, verse. I got used to working, working in those ways and it's, it's a wonderful journey, but it's also fun to then uh, play with that form. Um, Basically, music is, you know, it is A, B, A or A, B, C, D. And so it's, it's trying, and sometimes you can disguise the forms of things, so. Um, so you're not limited to just the one structure and often you've got to work out what's the best structure for this song. Um, and then there's working out, do we want to start with the chorus? Like, do we want the impact point to hit immediately? Um, or do we want it to be more of a build? Um, so there's, there's just already so many things to customise and think about that I'm grateful for the fact that song structures exist. I tend to think of, yeah, I just, I'm always trying to, I'm always trying to get out my head as the composer and trying to be the, the listener. It's almost impossible to do, but, you know, those simple forms work very well. So I want to reassure you that using conventional structures just isn't a problem. They're not a puzzle to solve. They're supposed to be something that makes life easier. Um, if you think about um, painters, you know, the vast, vast majority of paintings are in some sort of square or rectangular frame. People haven't sort of chopped off the corner. You, you could, or you could do it in a weird sort of wobbly sort of shape. You could do that. But it's interesting that even some of the most interesting painters, some of the most adventurous ones, just quite happy with this frame. So use a frame to help you not to sort of um, be a thorn in your side. Repetition. Repetition is an unavoidable, a brilliant thing about how music from all different cultures operate. It's inherently there. It's just built into music from all different cultures. Um, and so is literal repeats, like a loop um, of a drum beat or whatever it, else it is that you've sampled. Um, Try and remember that that's the same with stuff that is played live. So, you know, in a classical piece of music, someone might go... Or... Isn't that really just a loop? Even though they're playing it or even though they've written it down, it's just a loop. Um, and, uh, you know, a, a drummer actually playing the drums, <laughs> but playing a... It's still a loop, even if it's not a sampled loop that you've pulled off Apple Loops or wherever you've got your loops from. The academic Lauren Berlant once said, there is nothing more alienating than having your pleasures disputed by someone with a theory. And I agree. You know, if you're making loop-based music, your tracks flow, they're filling the dance floor, you're happy with them, you haven't got a problem. You know, this video is for people for whom making loop-based music is, is making them stuck. And that's what we're gonna be offering you tips for. I think of each section independently. I don't think of this needs to sound exactly like this because each verse is introducing something different to the overall story of the song, you know? And so what is the mood of each piece? Or what is the mood of each section? And now how can the arrangement 
complement that? How can the arrangement support that? And it, rarely is it ever the same. I like to try and storyboard it a little bit, try and, try and work out what the, what the impact point is, what the kind of punchline is, like, like a filmmaker would do or something like that. Just, just try and think how, how, what's the best and most impactful way um, to convey this story in a way that's going to make people feel the emotion that we want them to feel. One of the great joys of contemporary music is how using a DAW door you can um, you can just sort of pick up sections and just move them around. I can take this uh, pink bit, you know, and just bung it there, and suddenly I've got a new verse. Um, it's fantastic, but that can also lead you into thinking of a section as just being a, sen a section. I've just got the pink bit, I've got the blue bit, I've got the green bit, rather than thinking of that as being a journey in real time, that that green bit is leading to the blue bit. Think very much of the copy and paste thing. So, oh, here's an idea. And especially if I'm feeling quite pressured for time, I'm gonna take this idea, stick it here, rather than actually taking time to organically develop it. And sometimes you can hear that, you can hear the computerized bit, even if it's live musicians playing, you can hear the copy and paste. Um, so it can, that can be an issue um, with technology, for sure. I try not to copy and paste too much unless I'm going back and through it with a fine tooth, tooth comb and really evolving parts and making it interesting and going somewhere. If it's like in a scene, a long interview scene, let's say, yeah, sure, you can have a very simplistic, uh, repetitive theme, but how is it developing? Where is it going? How is it reacting with what's happening in the characters' heads? Um, I think it's important to sit and fine tune that and put, put the time into finding a flow um, because you'll get bored as a music creator writing it and listening to it, and then probably the audience might get a bit bored or a bit thrown off. I mean, personally, when I repeat a melody, I try to um, add stuff to it. So, you know, it's repeated, but it's got more. I'm going to be playing you lots of examples. Some of them are made with um, sampled loops. Some are made by loops played live. I'm not distinguishing between them, but you'll hear lots of different genres from different eras. Um, but we're going to start with this track that I knocked up. So this track here, is something that I, I knocked together. I literally gave myself a 10 minute um, limit to write this. I didn't think at all about the structure. I didn't think at all about se how sections join from one to the other. I just threw it out a load of loops, which I all just used from, from Apple loops. And I think I played in the piano part. That's it, okay? So everything is a loop. Just want to point out, Throughout the video, I've given different sections a different color, and if they've got the same color, then that means they've basically got the same musical elements all playing at the same time. And here, they're all different colors because it's basically a list structure. They're all different ways of navigating through the same four chords. And you'll notice this strange thing, that if I just flick around in this piece sort of randomly, it sounds sort of all right. this sounds kind of okay, the way I'm stringing this together, is because the purpose of each section is more or less to just vary the material. Now, variation's a big part of making how structures work, but in this track it feels more like I'm just anxious to vary it a bit and not be boring, rather than confidently making bold changes, giving different sections different identities, like this is a build, this is a tense moment, this is the peak, this is the questioning moment. This is the, the complex, weird, disorientating bit that shakes you up. Or this is the romantic bit. This is the bit where I take the melody somewhere you didn't expect. In this example, all my sections are doing the same thing. I'm just muting or unmuting things. So you get the idea. It's not that that sounded like an amazing structure, that, that it all made sense. There was nothing really that was a total, you know, um, really messed with your head. 
Um, it's because each of those sections has got a similar amount of sort of state of tension. There is a drop downy bit at the beginning and the end, but they all aren't leading anywhere in particular. I haven't thought at all about the joins at the end. There's no, well, we'll talk about the techniques that I haven't used in this. Let's listen to some contrasting examples. I'm going to use tracks. They've all got looping elements, looping drums, looping bass, um, but they're played live. So if I just do this track here, and we'll compare and contrast. This is Amy Winehouse's Rehab. Just listen to this. She's gonna do the same thing. Each section has a different purpose. So some of these sections are builds, some of them are peaks. Sometimes the brass is playing riffs, sometimes long notes. The drums have a really held back, suspenseful pattern, but they've also got another really flowing one. Do you get the idea? It's just not quite hanging together as a track. It obviously feels badly structured, and that's because the structure that Amy Winehouse has worked on, um, these sections have purposes. This... It's definitely leading there and not here. It's definitely not leading there. Here's another example. Um, just going to flash around Ashes to Ashes by David Bowie. Listen to what this sounds like if I do exactly the same exercise, sort of semi randomly playing, um, well, no, at randomly. Okay, a big problem with the way I'm doing this is the chords. Because in each section, there's different chords doing totally different journeys. So they're creating tension sections which land on other release sections. So if I mess with the order of the sections, it sort of doesn't work. Definitely the structure that David Bowie does is better than what I did from just jumping around there. Uh, the other thing that I don't want to be really clear about is that I could have picked some songs where you can jump around in that way and they actually work okay. It does depend if, you know, if your groove is good enough, if your loops are beautiful enough, um, if your dance floor is full um, with people who are loving it, or your track is a sort of trance-like sort of track, it's going for that really repetitive style, then again, you haven't got a problem. I'm, I'm not dealing with those cases where everything's working. I'm dealing with the, those frustrating moments where you don't know where to turn. Let's take an overview of these tracks. My track, a list of somewhat similar sections, so they've all got a different color. Amy's track has a few different colored blocks, different sections with different purposes. You can see verse, blue, blue, yellow, blue, 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 yellow, blue, then the four blocks of verse, four blocks of verse, and then the two ver um, blocks of bridge, two blocks of bridge. The structure just repeats. So it has that sense of order. If you return to something, it feel, you can start to feel the structure, hear the structure. So what's characteristic of the David Bowie song and the Amy song is that those sections have a purpose. The bridge is definitely a bridge. The build is definitely a build. Um, whereas in my track, I don't know, it's just a section followed by another section followed by another section. Check out the... The Black of the Berry by Kendrick Lamar. What do we notice? Just from the overview, same thing. It's got structure. Each section has a purpose. Intro. Second bit of the intro, where the beat picks up. Third bit of the intro, which repeats the melody of the first bit. That's the same as boom, da, 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 just in a different key. So that does a build, really. We'll get, we'll talk more about this section in a minute. And then we just go verse, verse with the rap, drop down, chorus. Verse, drop down, chorus. Verse, drop down, and then a surprise ending. We'll get to surprises. 
So this track has an amazing amount of structure um, built into it. Each section knows what it's doing. Each section has a purpose. It's a funny thing about music. People often say, oh, music's so difficult to talk about. And it's definitely true that it's difficult to sort of pin down your emotions about what you're feeling when you're listening to music. But it is possible. I've just done it. I've just described the purpose of a section. And if you find that you're getting stuck with a track, you're just going round and round treading water, it's a really good discipline to just say, what is that section doing? And ask yourself to, to describe it. Um, and often you can. You can just go to a track which you like, uh, go to 1 minute 33 or whatever, and just say, what is the track doing? And you'll usually find it is a purpose. It's a repetition of the first verse, but more intense. It's the drop down before the chorus. It's the fade out or, you know, so each section has a purpose. It's not just a section. What's really tempting to do in a door is to do this. What Brian Eno calls screwdriving. You go, oh, I've got my green section. I'm going to go in and look at what is there something boring about. It? I'm going to look at my bass line. I'm going to move that note up. I'm going to maybe change the volume of it. I'm going to just listen. Yes, I'm going to do this. Oh, let me just think about that little moment there. And I've already I've done this thing of just moving, microscoping in in this, you know, getting your screwdriver out and going in to fix some tiny little problem rather than asking yourself the question, what is that green section even doing? Where's it coming from? Where's it going to? So sections have a direction too. They don't just have a purpose, they have a direction. The beginning and the end are serving a different purpose. Let's just look at the, the bit in the black of the berry, the green section here. So the beginning of this is serving a different purpose to the end of the section. Okay, let's listen to what it's doing. It's doing a lot of things that we're going to go into more detail about. For the moment, I just want you to listen to a couple of sections that have a sense of direction. As a new layer, he starts to rap. This layer now starts to go on a journey upwards. That synth is going up, step by step. Here it goes. And then we're ready for a new section. So, can you see that although that was exactly the same chords, all loop based, it had a sense of moving forward in time. So this is a track by Octavian, really simple production. Got the same hallmarks as the Kendrick Lamar track or the one that I did where it's going around the same chord sequence over and over. But this little section here definitely has a sense of direction. He's doing a number of things to do that. I'll try and sort of call them out as we go through. We're going to go into them in more detail. I just want you to focus on listening to it. But listen to how the vocal increases in density. Um, it starts with lots of space and then he just starts to get faster, just pushing the track forward. Listen. <laughs> So here we go, here we go, drop down. Space, faster. Building that tension. A repetition, then we're moving on and then we're ready to move into a new section. So just these little things, we're gonna talk a lot more about them in a second. Although I'm pointing out how all these tracks are really sort of super structured, it doesn't mean that you necessarily have to sort of start with this master plan of, oh, I'm going to go verse, chorus, verse, chorus. No, you can sort of intuit. Your, your, your structure can emerge as you're working on a track. Until you've got the final record, basically, for me, everything is reasonably kind of nebulous, um, if that's the right word, just, just up in the air. Um, let's try this, see if it works, see if it, like, makes makes a good song. If it doesn't, let's try something else. I don't make a plan, no. Again, it, I feel like the, 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 the creative process and when they come out, that, that informs the form. I have quite an irreverent attitude to structure in that I think structure can emerge from the material itself and sometimes you have to listen to the material. I know that a, 
a lot of people believe you have to have the structure first and then like a jelly mold and you put the music in that but then you can inhibit the music but it it usually you have a sense i always try to think of in terms of time how do i want the audience to experience time that to me is the beginning of planning out structure so it's more about awareness you know if you feel that your track is going round and round in circles then that's the time to start being aware of whether you're using the right kind of repetition in the right sort of way or whether you need to increase pressure give more purpose to a section or give more direction to a section so before we move into talking about what all this music that we've been listening to is doing in real detail and picking it apart i just do want to say something about vocals which is so important So the thing about vocals is that they're obviously performed. They're usually, even if it's quite heavily edited, there's usually a sense of performance. And so it's much easier to get a sense of sort of peaks and troughs, ebbs and flows, um, tension and release in the vocal um, without doing too much heavy lifting, without having to go in with your mouth and do stuff because the singer's just sort of done it for you. Or if you're a singer, you've done it yourself naturally. Um, and I just want to show you this little example. Um, here. This is a young London rapper called Nick Gomez who was just rapping over a metronome for a project by Electric Farmer. And I've just got the track. I won't play it all, but this is just him. It's a minute and a half, two minutes maybe. But just look at the shape of that wave. You can see that that's got structure. It's got a sort of arch form. In fact, it's got a classic shape, a sort of golden section shape. Starts quiet, builds, builds, builds to intensity. Got a peak there which is about two thirds of the way through the track. Then it comes down and it ends even quieter than it started. So here you go, I'll just run through the, the structure. And I, I know that Nick didn't go, oh, I'm gonna do this structure, I'm gonna plan this arch form. He just spat out the lyrics and they sounded like this. Yo, I've been shunned out, I don't like it. All these questions. Sure. I just slide he stays like that for a while, mind. then he stops. Need a distract, don't care who you are, don't care what Intensity you do, nothing to lose and that's worse than a man without food, made it work but never, Starts where's to the build loyalty, up. where's the Can you the hear code? the intensity in his voice? Where's the love? What's the morals from these fuckers claiming they're so tough? 21 will th won't make the pain, getting bigger. love the pain, drinking, he has different aims, she has lonely days, lost the count, sleeps as breaks, Apex. has the train on the path to different lanes, all alone on the city lights, on a bench, right stays words, in. Like, what is life, but I keep it fresh. What and then he's gonna go into his descent the at the like end, the third drink. section Car, of the arch. I've been shunned out, I don't like it, all these questions. Repeating the same like motif as the beginning. In my mind. I see diamonds and he builds until he's super need quiet at the end need a motive need a distract yo so if you're not the kind of musician that does you know is played in a band or jams um you know in a in a with other musicians it can sometimes when you're working on a door you can be sort of alienated from that sense of natural structure so I always encourage younger musicians to just sing their ideas out, out loud because you naturally, like Nick did there, you naturally sort of put structure in when you're just humming to yourself. It's a really good, it's a really good um, rule, really. Okay, the other point about vocals is having heard a few tracks from beginner composers where they are getting stuck um, and they've asked for feedback. I found that often what they're doing is they're creating a track that needs a vocal. Everything about their track is saying it's a song, but it just hasn't got the vocal. And that's why it doesn't work. If there was a vocal, it would work. So you may find that all you need to do to make your track work, maybe all I needed to do to make my initial track work um, would be to get a really good performer to sing over the top and it would have all come together. So just be aware of that. If your song sounds, maybe you're creating a, a beat for someone else to rap over rather than a finished track. So let's talk about some specific tips for giving your tracks um, a sense of direction to make sure that sections have clarity, purpose, and that sense of moving onwards. The first one is take a wider view. Don't just think about the, the actual join between section A and section B, not the little two seconds before um, that join. Think 15 seconds, think 30 seconds before that. That's what these examples that I've been playing, like the Black of the Berry, the Kendrick Lamar example, that was a really a 30 second journey, a really carefully 
sculpted journey from A to B. Um, you can do something which just just joins in. It could be a little sound or it could be a drum fill going. Um, they're all good things, but they may not be enough. They might feel a bit forced. So take that wider view. Sing your idea through. If you do that, that thing that I was talking about, about how a band, you know, when they're playing, they just sort of, there's a natural accumulation or depletion of energy when you're playing in a band. If you're jamming with someone else, then you get to the peak and then everyone sort of knows that they're moving on to the next section. Um, if you're screwdrivering into a track, you, you um, it's really easy to forget that. So if you sing your idea, um, even if you're just kind of going, boom, da, cha, cha, boom, but you're not really singing notes, but you're just sort of going through the shape of it. No, it builds up. Da, 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 da. You might start to get ideas of how you can create that accumulation of energy, which forces a change to happen. Do a gradual crescendo. That could be a crescendo in volume, could be a crescendo in intensity, or it could be just a rise in notes. Um, you know, so Nick did that at the beginning of that, that, um, that vocal take. Every song, there's some sort of arc to it in one way or another, or there are dips and there are hills and there are valleys, but it's never ever just gonna be one straight line of a story. There's always something that is happening. It's never gonna be, here's my problem, I'm gonna talk about this problem for three and a half minutes straight, you know? Like there has to be some sort of context, there has to be some sort of backstory, there has to be, like you are trying to figure out how can I go about this journey musically? It could be a riser. Listen to this one here. This does a couple of things. Um, this is Knife Party. This is a predator. So this is accumulating rhythmically and pitch-wise. There's a sound that goes but there's also the percussion is increasing in density. It's starting with long notes and then getting shorter notes. Sound is still getting higher. Drop down. Here's another high to low note, totally different genre, but exactly the same technique. And you find all these techniques just in really unrelated genres. Here you go, listen to this one. End of chorus. This riff is the question. Little guitar answer. It's space. Question. Answer. More energy. Drums go double time. This answer is just a bit more frenetic. Let's do the guitar solo. It's just going to do this journey to try and reach a high note. So it's holding a, a lowish note. Goes on a little journeys up. Still playing relatively slowly. Now it's going to start playing faster. Down. Up. Down. Up. Up a bit further. Down and up to the highest notes. And it's reached its peak. And then we're back to the chorus again. There's other ways of doing it, and it's a really big deal in, in rap music. Often you'll get a his DNA by Kendrick Lamar. It's got this kind of pattern at the beginning. But then it builds into this section where it goes into triplets. Big intensity increaser used in hip hop. So he's he's been going um sort of square time and then he suddenly goes automatically increases intensity gives a real sense of the section being different you hear it in here's another example you can see here we go um that section is a repetition of this section here bodak yellow so another credibly famous song um that's your first motif, then she goes into triplets. Here we go. Then she starts to increase. Little bit of variation, which stops it going round. Building intensity, then she's gonna go. Back to the original section. So, um, brilliant sense of shape to that even though it's super compressed, even though that little dong, dong, dong um, sample's going round and round. So all these examples um, that I've been playing, these sections have 
um, in different ways, accumulations of energy, the ending of the section is different to the beginning of the section. Um, it is definitely heading to one place and not to another. Let's return to the black of the berry and we'll just talk about, because we can hear lots of the things that I've just discussed. I've mentioned some of them already, like the fact that the synth is rising up, but there's other things going on as well. Space. Introduce a new idea. That you you thing. Now he's going to increase the speed. So it's increasing intensity. It's heading somewhere. And now he's going to do the same with the sample. And use echoes. You, 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 you. Now he's going to echo his main... And then we move on. The second one is a depletion of energy, like we heard at the end of the, um, the Nick's rap, where he just basically gets quieter and quieter, and the music gets, his, his vocal becomes more spacious, less sort of gabbled, and more with, you know, space between each phrase. Much rarer thing than the riser or the, the accumulation of energy. I mean, you hear it a lot in film music, but not so much in songs. So opportunity for you there to, to make something which which uses the downward curve, gradual downward curve, rather than a sudden drop. Next, create a sense of tension with chords. Now, this is not something that lends itself so much to loop-based music, however you're getting your loops, whether you're, you know, pulling them off a, a website or creating them by inputting them in some way. Um, but as soon as you get into that sort of structure of having a four-bar, eight-bar, two-bar loop chord wise um it's it's yeah it's not the the first thing that would occur to you um is to create chord sequences um which which have tension and release if you listen to this um this part of rehab that we were listening to earlier on this little bit here tension release that feeling of wanting to move on isn't just in the drumming and isn't just in her vocal. It's also in the fact that da, 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 that chord wants to go. Ba, ba, ba. It just 100% wants to go back there, go back to home. You've got tension and release. Um, so uh, we've made a lot of videos on chords. Uh, so I'm not going to go over it in a big way in this, uh, in this video. I just want to mention it, that it's part of your kind of equipment that you can use. Um, by changing the chords in your loop, that will create a sense of directionality, a sense of a section moving and requiring something new from the next section. The drop down. I think you probably got a good idea of a drop down. We've heard a few already. Um, just usually the classic drop down removes a lot of layers, goes down to maybe a simpler beat. Um, maybe the vocal stops and the main riffs disappear and you just sort of hover for a while, getting ready for the next section. So. I think I did a sort of drop down in my track right at the beginning. Um, so here's a great example, I think, of a drop down, which has got a bit of extra spice. Here we go. Listen to this. This is the main riff. Here we go. And back. So that drop down does do the, the classic things. It drops the, that main riff, dong, dong, da, da, dong, dong. That doesn't happen in there. But it also does these other things as well. The vocalist starts to sing. He's been rapping before and he suddenly sings notes. That gives us a sense of, oh, something new's happened. Uh, He's also got these drums go from being incredibly solid to incredibly sort of chaotic. Listen to this. No drum. Then they start to Stop. Um, a really good drop down. Here's another drop down. Let's listen to the Kendrick Lamar drop down. This is a sort of, I would call this a double drop down. 
in that he's been rapping away. It's this this bit here. He does a drop down. You think you've dropped down quite a lot, and then he completely removes almost everything for an extra bit before this brilliant chorus. You sabotage my community, the making a killing. You made me a killer. First stage of the drop down. No. He introduces this, the title of the track. Then he does a little. So there's another layer of kind of, again, similarly using a slightly chaotic sort of, uh, yeah, what's going on before smacking in. Listen to it once more. Something. Repeat it twice. Here we go. Bit of... And then lay in by putting in the chaos. The feeling of everything coming together is just that much more satisfying. That section knows exactly what it's doing. Okay, the next principle is know your apex. Not only does a section have a sense of direction, a sense of purpose, but often an entire track, that could be a film score, it could be a, a scene of a film score, it could be a four minute pop song, but it has its own shape and it has an apex that you're aiming for. And you build towards that apex, usually by balancing things that are repeated and things that are new. So we're gonna come in with the absolute classic song, Crazy in Love by Beyonce, which is in itself um, a sampling of another brilliant song by the Chi Lights. We're gonna come in at two minutes into the song where all this material has already been in introduced using repetition, a bit of variation in her vocal. Listen to what happens in the penultimate chorus. So we've got used to the how the chorus usually goes. And then she does a variation, exactly the same beat, exactly the same riff, but different vocal. That's totally new, we haven't heard it before. She then builds to a high note. Accumulation of energy. You got me, you got me, you got me. And now we. Re she, she hits that really high note. We have reached the apex of the, of the track with that high note. There. That is the highest note that she sings in the song, um, which is a bit of a classic. You get it a lot in classical music. The highest note is the peak of the, of the song. So, in other words, this chorus, exactly the same backing completely different purpose. That first section is there in order to make the final chorus feel better because you haven't heard it for a while. Do you see what I mean? That is what I was talking about thinking 15, 30 seconds ahead. That chorus isn't just a chorus. That is the chorus that is gonna absolutely blast you away by being repeated in a different way at the end. Uh, just a kind of brilliant bit of structural songwriting. So I've been going on and on about how you're always leading to a place, playing from surprise, adding layers, taking layers away, always thinking about what's going to happen. But of course you can do a, a surprise transition. Um, so here's a surprise transition. Um, so this is from the Black of the Berry again. So he's doing this section. That familiar riff. So, if you never heard the track before, you probably didn't see that coming. So, you know, I've gone on and on about how you're thinking ahead in time, preparing yourself for the next section playing with surprise and building tension in order to lead the listener down the track. But you can just play a game with, um, with your listener. You can build up to something where they're expecting one thing, and in fact, you could just cut. 